I'm Boarding Brute, and in today's video, we're going to be going over a couple different build styles for Puckles. Uh, we're going to be talking about some of the benefits of each style. Uh, also, later on, I'm going to be showing I did a little bit of a test to figure out kind of the exact range of them when they're set to high, uh, and the results were kind of surprising. Uh, we're going to quickly talk about feeding your NPCs and supplying them with gold if you're on an island. We're going over the first style, it's going to be a uh, manned puckle tower. It's going to have three puckles on it. It's going to be on a triangular ceiling. Uh, it's the same thing as being on a square ceiling. However, this one you're using one less puckle, so it's a little bit cheaper. There's less NPCs on the island. In my personal opinion, I prefer the triangles over the squares. Uh, if you're doing an elaborate drake rack, you're probably going to have the squares just so that they can all join together. Um, yeah, the big key to making this work is just making sure that those back legs are as close together as you can possibly make them. And uh, as long as you end up playing within those parameters, you can kind of have them poking past just a little bit, but you no. Know, after you do this a few times, get the placement right down and you'll be able to them together. I use uh, thatch tiles, you can use stone tiles. Myself, I prefer using the thatch because you just kind of see a little bit of a better differential uh, between them, so it kind of helps line up the buckles a little bit easier. When you're placing these buckles, the default range is set to medium, so make sure you adjust those to high. Um, also, if you give them just a rough description as to where they are, uh, that could effectively help you later on uh, when you're getting raided, just kind of locating where they're raiding from. Uh, another thing you could do with a triangle is just put like a singular puckle up there. This way you're going to have to put like two thatch ceilings down just to get to snap properly, but myself, if it's in more of like a, um, like a hot zone, I might consider putting uh, one puckle on each pillar kind of deal, uh, just because if they're going to be raiding they're gonna to want to uh, take down each of the puckles right so you can either shoot one stone towel or and that takes out one puckle or you can um, you know however many towers you have and each time they shoot down one of those stone pillars they're only taking one puckle at a time so placing puckles singularly here and there like I said the less NPCs on your island the better uh, whether it's for the food cost or the gold overhead or just overall things that have to be rendered um, some of the bigger and elaborate builds on the main islands they get a little bit hectic so if you can squeeze a few NPCs out of the build collectively like maybe down on the ground you have these triangle um, NPC towers that's fantastic the uh, next method we're going to go over is just a quick and dirty one. You basically put three foundations in the chain so that they don't um, decay. And then you just put a manned puckle on each side, kind of facing each other. Set them so that they're a little bit off center from each other. And for the most part, for like a quick and easy ground coverage, it, it works out okay. Uh, usually the best defense for an island is actually being online and responding to the uh, land invasion. So, puckles are only going to go so far to protect everything. You could either take your time and build a whole bunch of puckle towers, or you can just have, like, the um, stone puckle towers in, say, more of the key areas, and then just have a whole bunch of these ground puckles kind of scattered about just to kind of keep everyone on their toes when they're at your island. Uh, the next method is a four-person chandelier. This one is going to be particularly useful, like I said, if you're on top of a pillar and you're wanting, they're kind of like scrubbers, preventing people from just climbing up to your base. Uh, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to have yourself a pillar poking down from somewhere. You're going to build two thatch ceilings out. You're going to drop down two thatch walls, so you're actually going to go three so that you can get the ceiling to snap. Okay, then you're going to build a thatch ceiling over, and then you're going to place your stone ceiling. And this is the ceiling that's actually going to hold the puckles. Now we're just going to climb up there, get around. Okay, this is the same thing as building a regular puckle, puckle tower. 
So you put your extra ceilings down, you line up the puckles to the corner. Again, the back two legs, they have to be kind of lined up to the edge of the stone tile. And that puckle won't delete when uh, you move the thatch ceilings. Once you have that done all the way around, you can actually then put a pillar in the center and connect it to the uh, hanging down pillar. Then from there, all you have to do is remove the thatch tiles. And there you go. You have a chandelier hanging underneath your cliff platform. Rinse and repeat that all the way around your uh, massive pillar. And there you go. So when we're comparing the two styles, whether to put four NPCs on or put three NPCs on, I already kind of mentioned this a little bit. The more NPCs you have that are rendered on your island and all that kind of stuff, there's a global uh, tame limit, this kind of thing. Uh, you know, myself personally, I, I am a big believer in the um, in, in doing the uh, puckle towers with the triangular ceiling where they're applicable. Like I said, if it saves extra NPCs all the way around the island, say you have like 50 of these down, you know, um, yeah, it, it all adds up. So here are the NPCs, the better, but you're still getting immaculate ground coverage. You go from the corner here, you look, each one of these puckles, they have um, a left to right of like 270 degrees, right? So if we're right about here, we're going to you know, maybe get hit by three, probably only gonna get hit by two, and that's pretty much the same thing as the triangular ceiling. Even if you're riding past it, you're gonna get hit by three if it's a square. If you're riding past the triangle, you're pretty much gonna get hit with all three, right? So, whatever you wanna do, that's up to you. But uh, these are just some extra. So going over the effective range, I made this little display here. We kept it so that the puckle was completely flat to our testing area. So I ran like 40 foundations out and I went 16 tiles tall. And I was just trying to figure out if the targeting range was more of like a spherical dimension or if it was more of like a cylinder. And to my surprise, it is looking like it's more of like a cylinder. So when I put the spider down, I went cube by cube, I unclaimed it, and I had the range of both puckles set to high. And when I marked it with a stone ceiling tile, and then I went and <laughs> I made the top puckle active to do that testing, the conclusion was they both hit the spider within the same tile. So I moved the spider back spider didn't get hit by either. I moved the spider forwards and the spider got hit by both. So for whatever reason the magical number is 30 foundations. Uh, the magical number for the ammo container if you've used galleons in the past or even if you're brand new to this the magical number is uh, 20 foundations. The ammo container can supply puckles. So if you're trying to figure out and kind of gauge you know, well, where should I, how close should I put these puckle towers? Uh, that is entirely up to you. Like I said, the range of these puckles when they're set to high is about 30 foundations, even if they're up 16 tiles. Um, and the range of the ammunition container is about 20 foundations. And same thing. So hopefully you find that useful. We're just going to quickly talk about feeding these NPCs and supplying them with gold. Uh, if you are an island owner, you can just simply go up to the flag and you can adjust this setting here. Uh, and basically by toggling through them, you'll see the plus in the top right corner. Uh, one plus is just your crew, two plus is your crew and your allies, and three plus is any NPC that comes to the island. They're going to pull from your gold and your berries. Um, just another quick tip, if you look into the industrial tier, uh, there is an industrial like structures bench, and if you place it down and pick it up and roll it to kind of the you know, tiles that are applicable for you, it will give you, it's basically like a smithy, but everything you can craft from there uh, is like an infinite blueprint. So definitely worthwhile looking into. If you haven't already looked into the industrial tier, it is very much worth it.
Okay, going over the grenades, this is a quick and simple one. The reason why we put our Puckle Tower is taller, there's a couple other great videos that you can go and check out. Um, we all say the same thing, which is, it's just for grenades. So, anything underneath 16 tiles is susceptible to grenades. Anything above 16 tiles, not susceptible to grenades. Okay, that easy. Thank you for watching. If you found any of this helpful or you want me to cover something in the future, please like and subscribe. Maybe leave a comment down below and I will see what we can do. Again, watching and happy holidays.